also, as you may or may not be aware, there's been quite a bit of rain, and to be honest, quite a bit of rain uh, is, well, it's an understatement, shall we say. Uh, on Thursday, it pretty much rained non-stop all day and well into the night, causing massive floods in my area. Barnsley, where I'm currently situated, is still under a yellow flood warning and <laughs> it's just gone worse um and why are we talking about floods uh, you may ask um well one it's a bit topical and two this ties of course into our usual topic of brexit and why it's so stupid to leave the european union now a common complaint <coughs> a common complaint you will hear in this area as, as particularly is that we are the quote left behind voters we have been left behind by our government our mps and our our, our government bodies don't listen to us they do um it's just politics is hard and it is hard to get stuff done especially over the last couple of years where we have had a coalition government followed by a, a conservative majority uh, and again another coalition government basically focusing on just one solid uh, problem and that would be Brexit now here's the thing and I've said this before I'll keep on saying it what you are seeing now is the beginning this is the beginning of the beginning and we haven't even left the European Union. So I say to all these people who are, are fed up of, of Brexit, this isn't the end. This is far, far from the end. This is the beginning of the beginning. Because once you get a withdrawal agreement in place, we then have to um, work out how we are going to continue our relationship with our biggest trading partner and Europe and the European Union the single market was always the best most closest um, you know source of our trade that ever was it's not going to change the only problem is is that it becomes more expensive more of a hassle for businesses to now access that market and that cost will be passed on to the British consumer. And it's not just uh, stuff coming from us into Europe, it's stuff coming from Europe into us. Now, everyone else will say, oh, but bowler hat man, what about um, <coughs> all these fantastic trade deals we can do? Well, as I've said in the past before, well, there's a thing called trade gravity, where you always trade with your closest neighbors. And our closest neighbours are in Europe, they're all in the European Union, they're all in the single market. Just because we get this quote-unquote fantastic, and I say fantastic in the most heaviest of air quotes I can possibly possibly do on camera, a, a, a quote fantastic trade deal uh, which will sell off our NHS and, and end up privatising it and costing us extra more and more thousands upon thousands of pounds uh, in drugs in fact one thing that i definitely recommend you go and watch is the dispatches episode on this if you think this trade deal is going to be good for us and somehow good for our nhs then please go and explain to the woman who is is literally she was on an american uh drug that cost uh oh can't even remember the numbers now but Put it this way, it was good, it was effective, it worked for her, excellent, brilliant. And then the NHS come along and just go, hey, look, there's this other drug that we now have that is just as effective, except it's cheaper. Now, any trade deal we will do would basically lock in uh, and, and stop the NHS from buying those sorts of drugs. Essentially, they will go, well... You can't just buy drugs. We want you to buy an exclusive license from us. So now, not only can we can the NHS not offer those just as effective but cheaper drugs, they will be forced um, 
by the US government. Again, um, so much for sovereignty, right, folks? Um, by the US government for up to, again, a period of 10 years to buy that more expensive drug. And that will cost the NHS thousands. Now, that is a, a fact. And once again, we will look back around to the floods. Because some of you may not remember, back in 2015 and 16, there were also quite a lot of floods. Now, of course, what happened? Well, Westminster, they provided some flood relief, but the majority, about 60 million euros, came from the European Union to help these areas that had been most affected by the floods. And guess what? All of those areas happened to be the areas that also voted to leave. Now, once again, these areas voted to leave because they, quote, felt that they were left behind and that they weren't paid attention to. And yet I say to these areas that voted, look, the people and organization that has paid attention to you, that has helped you in times of disaster, that has invested in your towns and your communities, brought jobs to your area, allowed, uh, for example, Enterprise Barnsley. I think I don't think I've talked about this before, but Enterprise Barnsley was a Euro is a European Union project that has allowed and established over six hundred businesses, people who got advice startup um you know funds and cash from the eu to be able to start their business those businesses are now contributing to our local economy they would not exist without that funding without that advice and yet now once again we have just had a severe flooding in this area we are not going to get any extra help from the European Union. Why? Because we are, again, apparently wanting to leave it. But of course, we can't. Because I, get, I will refer you to the video we did last week about that Brexit expert who basically said this. Look, all forms of Brexit are economically damaging. And the party that does it will be punished at the polls for it. And Boris Johnson desperately trying um, to apparently get the Brexit deal he wants, which is the, the, the quote, clean break, uh, no deal Brexit, which, again, as we have just learned this week, is also still on the cards post-election. Um, post uh, so please, please, please do not vote Tory, for God's sakes. We've had nine years of austerity, um, increased a thousand food banks have increased by over a thousand percent homelessness has increased by over 170 percent these are just some of the figures that are that are affecting this country and all our problems are not caused by the eu they have always been caused by the tory austerity the ideological project shall we say of austerity on the British public that has affected the working class the most. Leaving the European Union and voting to leave might at the time seem like a really good idea to kick the establishment in the nuts, but it's not going to help you in the long run. And as I've said before on this very channel, in fact, a couple of times last week, all roads lead us going back to the EU. doesn't matter whether it be five, ten years or whatever, we will just end up back in the European Union. So this entire project, this entire British Euroscepticism has shown to be what it is. It's just an ideological project by the right wing to try and carve out a bigger slice of pie for them. This is, as has been said uh, a couple of this weeks by a lot of Labour MPs, it will be Thatcherism on steroids which is exactly what many of these people have been trying to do. And again, I reference, go back and watch my video on um, Britannia Unchained and the fact what all these people want to do to uh, this country. No one would vote for in their right minds, but 
if they can get through it with a, a stealth and think about it if Brexit if he's, he will cause all this chaos then they can make all these excuses to implement all these dreams and finastic you know, deregulation they want because oh well it'll help uh, stabilise Britain, it'll help bring back our, our economy it won't, it will <laughs> we will forever be um, and well we are becoming once again the sick man of Europe and there you go